So it's frightening to think that all of these people who have been teaching for all of these years, um, you know, I think film classes and, and theory has probably been taught since the 1930s. It's when a lot of that interesting um, technique was being discovered. So maybe we started teaching film in the 1950s. I'm not really sure the history of it. However, it's very intimidating to think that um, I can just change it and just say, well, this isn't actually relevant anymore. Um, especially as a feminine voice, especially as someone who has not been necessarily given the power or given the permission to carry that knowledge with them. So it's intimidating and it's scary because students also expect certain things when they arrive to the university and they expect the class to be conducted in a certain way and that we have, you know, three major tests that dictate their entire grade. And so when they arrive and it's not that, they either think you're a chump <laughs> because you're a little bit softer or maybe you just decide to evaluate them in a different way or they actually think you don't know what you're doing because you don't have a text and you're not rigid. And so it's really scary. I've done this in some smaller classes with the cap being about 45 people and it's a little easier to manage. I think it wears off after a couple weeks when you have a smaller class, but in a class that's so large, oftentimes I don't know their names by the end of it. I, most of the time, I don't know who they are. And so it's kind of like leaping out on the Indiana Jones, <laughs> that, that stone bridge that you had to like, the leap of faith, right? And hope that the stone bridge was there. That's a lot what teaching a giant GUR class without a traditional text is like. So arriving at a new remodeled structure for the course required understanding that I was not going to be teaching cinema in the same way that I had always taught it. This became easy because I had already been reading these articles and quickly figuring out that it's, it's like a garden. There's trees there and there's roots and there's really good soil, but sometimes you just have to rip that whole thing out shake off the dirt and replant the seeds. And once I had come to decide that that's what I was gonna be doing, because I was now going to be talking about film the way that more feminine people, more people of color, trans people, all these exciting artists were talking about understanding film and what influenced them and why that was important. I realized that the purpose of this course was to teach that catharsis is a need for human beings, which then became kind of the main theme. So once I figured out that we were gonna have five different sections that we were talking about to expand on this idea that catharsis is a need for humankind, then I could break that down into two weeks at a time. So all of these articles would inform each section that we need to teach. So one week we'll have a Nakira Karasawa week where we kind of look at that director and the beautiful work that he incorporated and added to direction. But what we do know is that his idea of this good versus bad, this samurai type Western narrative is not really conducive to the feminine voices or to our other students. So we'll look at his work as a whole, but then we'll look at something else. Um, because he has informed Spielberg and Scorsese and films that everybody has seen and is aware of. But then we choose a different film that makes more sense. And there's usually about seven or eight that I have to choose from. And I will leave a list for the students also that week of the other films that we're not seeing that they can continue to watch if they're interested in that form of direction or that subject matter that helps inform them as a whole. So it's important that you have a foundation in blended courses or understanding online presentation. And so understanding how to incorporate all that and understanding that it just is a process that takes time and it's not gonna be perfect right from the start makes things a lot easier in some ways. It's little tiny um, goals, little tiny uh, aspirations and, and overcoming each one and, and folding it in over time. This was just the final step in taking the information and training from the Center for Instructional Innovation and moving it to a next level um, without a text and trusting that it would work or not and being okay with that. 